Hello and welcome, I'm Tim and this is Tim BSC and I'm back in New York, so uh, familiar scene here. We are in uh, Port Newark, Port Elizabeth is right over here, separated by this little channel here and we've got a bunker barge with about 3,000 tons of product on board and we need to bring this over down to uh, Carteret, New Jersey and uh, go down there. So. Actually, this doesn't have 3,000 tons on board. That was the one last night. No, this one is empty and we gotta take it down there to get loaded. Ah, trying to get used to everything going, doing all the things. But anyway, I figured uh, I would uh, see if I could shoot some content like old times. There were some people that said they missed that. So here we go. <laughs> made up in push gear with a light tank barge double skin 301 we're 400 by 13 deep draft on the tug we'd like to get underway and head down for KMI Carteret uh, old number one Very good, good copy at all. All right, so we checked in with traffic. MSC camping, Montessoria. All right, Matt, you can start letting everything go. You can let go from the stern to the bow. The light and underway from ship side. Stern to the bow. While he does this, I'm just going to test the engines here to make sure everything's working good. Everything's good. Turn up the heat because I freeze to death up here. I think my blood has gotten much thinner since I've been in Puerto Rico. Turn on the uh, radar here. Chart plotter's all set. I apologize, I only have one camera with me because I'm working over. Incidentally, if uh, anybody is hearing things, and, uh, or, the, what did I should say? Actually, you know what? I'm falling off. This guy's having trouble, so I'm going to bring the, I'm going to bring the stern back in for this guy because he's having a little trouble. Hey, Cam, you think you can bring our stern over a little bit? Yeah, I'm bringing it over for you right now. I'm just setting up the rudder. So you can see he's down here. He was just having a little difficulty. But what's good about that is that means that if it wants to go that way, maybe it will come off the dock nice and easy. And there's a ship that came in right behind us, so we don't have a whole lot of room behind us, but we got plenty of room ahead of us. While he's doing this, I'm going to make a security call to let everyone know what I'm doing. Security call to Cape Fear, singling up Lions Berth 51, be turned around and outbound for Carteret. Okay, he got that line in. So now I'm going to try to get the stern going out. I kind of like that. Oops, sorry, I didn't straighten out. I'm trying to find a way I can get the compass so it doesn't shake too much on you. you tell them out of practice here. Alright, now I got the bow coming in, the stern coming out. Matt, when you get up there, just take a look at that rake again. 
so I don't get into anything uh, with the cement up there. So I just got the stern moving a little way from the dock and I've been all stop ever since because I don't want to drive the bow into this. Uh, you know, there's a couple tires out here, but if we miss All right, Cap, we're going down to our last line now. Take her in. So uh, I don't want to drive the bow into the uh, cement. I see the wind just making a, what we call a cat paw on the water. So it looks like we got 19, 20 knots of wind. And uh, so hopefully he'll get this line off so that we don't have to bring the bow back to him. Come on, man. Throw that thing. Hey, oh, oh, come on, throw it again. You got this, man, get it. All right, I'll bring it back in for you. So now he's having trouble with that line, so I gotta try to bring the bow over, but what's really gonna happen is the stern's gonna come out. This is one of the differences between the 3000s and the, uh, the 4200s, is the 4200s have more weight, or what we call ass on the boat, and you can snap the bow over a lot better with the 4200s than you can the 3000s. Hey, don't let me hit that bow, so let me know if I get close. Yeah. Good to go. We'll call it 15 15 underway. Traffic. So actually, this worked out pretty well. Uh, not for him, but for me. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that I'm at a good angle here, so I can start backing up. I'm going to miss the ship back of me. The wind is blowing from right to left. So, if anything, I don't just start coming around even though I don't want the bow to come around. But I'm going to get back. Actually, as long as I come back a little bit, uh, should be fine to get that. I need to get room on the stern, on the starboard side, so that I can rotate counterclockwise to the left, but have enough room on my stern. Because if I do it right now, I'll hit the dock and I back up. And right now, I need to twist to the right a little bit to get further away from the ship. You can't see the ship. The ship is, if I were in line at the dock, I'd be up against the ship right now, so I need to keep rolling. I said, you know what, I might even be able to roll this clockwise. I think I, I might, you know what, I think I'm going to do that. I've said in other videos that you have to be flexible in this job, and uh, I think I can do this. So my plan now is to gonna be to continue to back and put rotate clockwise. Now I'm going to have the deckhand tell me when he can see down the side of the ship, which would indicate that uh, we'll be free to rotate around the ship. Alright, you let me know when I can uh, spin by that ship, meaning if I, or if I gotta keep coming uh, to the south floor. Good boy, Captain. It looks like the, uh, the outer side of that ship is coming abreast of our forward yoke now, so we still need about a good 30 feet or so. Very good. Okay, so the barge is rotating on its own, so instead of doing a twist, I'm going to just start coming back to open up some more room on us. Look me back at me, make sure I'm not hitting anybody. Now it's on, uh, you're hearing all the vibration and all that. That's because we are really light on fuel. We're going to order in for fuel. Okay. 
said that the uh, other barge is finished now and that um, they'll be out of there by the time we get down there. So there was a little, the tankerman was confused, or I don't mean confused, he was concerned that by the time we got where we were going, um, which is about an hour and a half away, that there was somebody in the berth that we're going to. But uh, I called my dispatcher and he said, no, they're done, they're just doing paperwork, and so and it's safe to assume that in an hour and a half or so, they should be not only done, but uh, vacated the berth as well. So just to reiterate what I'm doing, um, I have like a, almost no speed at all, and my rudder is hard right, my port engine is ahead, and my starboard engine is astern, and I'm just rotating here. And uh, once we get pointed out, good to go. Cape Fear is underway from 51, bound for the kills. So. So uh, the purpose of the security calls is just to make sure traffic's already told me that there was one guy coming, but he's going to be coming, uh, I'll meet him later, and uh, we want to, uh, in the event that somebody didn't hear me talking to traffic, I can still talk to 13, which is all of us talking to each other. day here but uh this ship on our port side just came in we got a couple other container ships here and uh you see this little blue one will be coming up on the right hand side and that's one of the ones that goes back and forth I, 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 think they, I always get confused i think they go to bermuda I think they go back and forth to Bermuda, but they're on a regular schedule. And it's funny, they're a cute little ship, but what happens is when they need fuel and we go to bunker them, <laughs> our barge is almost, it's very hard to tie up to them because our barge is longer than they are. So, not that's not exactly accurate, but if you notice, there's a rake in the stern and a rake in the bow, and so to get on the flat part, our barge is definitely longer than the flat part of the ship. So now as I started to straighten out, I straightened my rudder out and took my starboard engine that I was backing on and put it ahead. And uh, now we'll uh, 
put our seats in a full upright position, stow our tray tables, and get ready to roll. So it's at this point that I'd normally shut off the camera because uh, the lion's share of the work for getting underway is done. Now we just drive it down and get to where we're going. But I always got a bunch of people that like to kind of listen to the radios going off and see the sights. So I'll shut up. Thank you. Now in an effort to head off comments that I'm sure will be coming, everyone will see this ship on the right hand side, on the starboard side of the barge here, and it says Evergreen on it. And they all will say, oh isn't that the ship that blocked the Suez Canal? And uh, there's a misconception out there. Evergreen is the name of the company. This particular one is the Everfaith. I think it was the Evergiven that was... Uh, um, the one that blocked the Suez Canal. So, uh, yeah, just because it says Evergreen doesn't mean it's that one. <laughs> said this before in other videos but uh, the way we try to manage radio traffic in such a busy harbor like New York where you literally have hundreds of different vessels moving all at the same time is that VTS or vessel traffic services operates basically on three different channels so you check in on channel 11 and the east side of their control is up to, from from Long Island Sound to the Brooklyn Bridge. You would use channel uh, 12, and then we use channel 13 as a something that we all talk to each other on. And those are all low power channels, so they're not going to be broadcasting at full 25 watts. So uh, it, 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 it's usually when you hear somebody, they're in your general vicinity. We're not listening to people that are 20 miles away. And then uh, when you go from the Brooklyn Bridge all the way to the Emily Miller Miller's Launch, AK Railroad Bridge or Arthur Kills Railroad Bridge, up to uh, the next one, going to the Agassilia. Um, then you would use channel 14 for VTS, and uh, VTS also uh, handles anchorage control as well. But it's a it's a really good system that way yeah, where right, the, by using low power radio so that that we don't all walk over each other uh, tends to work yeah, pretty yeah, well. Let me know before you open. Sorry, but it's also kind of funny too because you'll go for a long time and nobody says anything and then everyone has to say the same thing or not the same thing but everyone has to talk at the same time. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Sometimes people will say, "What happens when two boats are calling you at the same time. The way that usually works, if somebody's two miles away and another person's a half a mile away, 
the person that's a half a mile away is going to be the threat that's going to, I'm probably going to have to deal with sooner. And if they both key their mics, that one that's closest to me will probably be a much powerful, you know, more powerful signal. And it will just, we call it getting stepped on. He'll just blow over the top of the other guy, and so I'll hear him there. Sometimes you'll hear the radio traffic where they'll say, uh, yeah, come back with that, you got stepped on. And that means that somebody was talking to somebody that was on the lower end of the spectrum and the person with the higher end was calling somebody else and it blew out the conversation the guy wanted to hear. So when you hear people say, ah, come back, uh, you got stepped on, that's what they're talking about. So we're coming to the corner of Port Elizabeth. Directly in back of us, 180 degrees in back of us is Port, I mean, uh, uh, Newark Airport. And we're going to be turning south. And I think that's probably a good, well, we'll make the turn here and then I'll shut the camera off. Now, yeah, you know what, this is long enough. You guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that some of you uh, are happy seeing New York again. I know that uh, a lot of you guys uh, missed me shooting content in New York and uh, I gotta tell you it's good to be back I'm only back here for two weeks as I'm filling in but I'm gonna try to get as much content as I can to give for you you guys you know unlike Puerto Rico where we only go to a handful of different ports we do all kinds of different things here in New York and so there's usually a lot more to see and I think that's what makes things more interesting for the general audience so Hopefully I'll do that, but thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you uh, like these videos and you want to support them, I'll put links in the description if that's your thing. If not, that's totally cool too. I'm just happy that you guys are watching. And uh, if you get a chance, check out my other channel, SP Paquita. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. And uh, as always, take care, be safe, and I'll see you on the one.